Hey chatters. So I don't know when you're, you're joining me, but we've been at this obsidian journey for a little while now at recording this. I have about 14 or 15 videos out on obsidian. And so I figured it'd be a good time to just take a step back at the wider view here and open up my second brain or what I'm starting to call it, my digital garden, open it up to you all and, and take you on a walkthrough so you can see how I structure things and how I've been using it actually, like what are the plugins I actually use and how it works into my workflow. Let's get started and let's walk through my brain. First thing I want to mention is the daily note. I've said this throughout my videos. It's probably the most important part of your Obsidian Vault to get into the practice of taking your daily notes. I've heard that this is quite difficult for people and it might not be the way for you to get started. I've seen a lot of people take their daily note and go way overboard, adding way too many headings and things like that. Especially in the beginning, you want to keep it as simple and practical as possible. So let me show you how I structure my daily note and hopefully this can help you think through what your daily note might look like. I just have the date at the top. This is pretty typical. I used to have a bunch of properties and then realized I never filled them out. I don't even use tags, really. I would say that you probably don't really need many properties. Maybe the date. I don't know. Whatever you want, but try to make it as automated as possible. Don't have anything in there that you actually have to fill out. Next, I have my calendar split up into morning, afternoon, evening. Now, what I found was happening is since I have a day job and all my side hustles and all this personal stuff is that I have all these calendars that are disparate and I want to pay for something that put them all together. But this is actually a great daily practice as well, even if you have your calendar, which is what does my day look like? Let me take the first part of my day, look at all my calendars and collate it into one area. And this will allow you to think through, okay, when do I have blocks of time to actually get work done and not do meetings and how stressful is my day going to be? Where can I find space to, to relax? Whatever that might be. And so I just fill these headings out, 8 to 9 a.m., this, blah, 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 blah. I start almost every morning doing that. And then I have it split out into the different categories of the work I have. You'll probably only have two things here, maybe. But I have my personal, Synaptic Labs, SynthMinds, and YU. And throughout the day, all I do is I take notes under the appropriate heading based on whatever's coming up, the meetings I'm in, whatever I need to do. So that's more or less my daily note. Try to keep it simple. Do what you can to do the same. Okay, second, probably the biggest... Actually, let me say one more thing. Uh, I'd never use this, but there is this uh, plugin called Editing Toolbar. And I want to mention it to you because I know that Markdown can maybe be a little, I don't know, it's something new you got to learn, right? And whenever you have something new you got to learn, it's a little bit of an effort. And so to reduce that barrier, there is this plugin called Editing Toolbar, which just gives you the typical word processor toolbar. So you don't have to do any of the markdown. You can just click the heading to, you can just click the bowl, just like you would in any other word processing document. Okay, on to probably the most useful plugin to me, which is Checklist. Now, again, I don't know about you, I probably have a million different areas, or at least prior to Obsidian, a million different areas where I'm trying to capture my to-do list. And all that ends up happening is all my to-dos get scattered and I, didn't, like, I have to go searching for them. It creates friction, so I'm less likely to get it all done. This is probably my favorite plugin. Again, it's called Checklist because I can literally drop a checkbox, which again, is you do the dash, space, open square bracket, space, close square bracket, space, and it will turn into here. And then I just write a uh, chord video of sitting in a vault here. And I just do hashtag synaptic labs. And you see, it just puts it here under synaptic labs. Now this is not how checklist comes uh, in like normally, you have to actually set this up. So if we go into settings, and we go down to checklist. You'll see here we have this tag name area. And you can just create your own tag names. This, this is fun. And so I have one for each of the work paths that I'm doing. And so 
when I put that tag Synaptic Labs, you see it's showing up in Synaptic Labs. If I did YU, it'd show up in YU. This can help you keep, again, your tasks still organized in some way, but you don't have to go searching for them everywhere. They're all in one place and you can stick it in any node, anywhere in your vault, and it'll show up here. And then when you check it off here or in here, it disappears. So that's probably like my favorite in terms of keeping everything nice and organized. Okay, the second organizational thing I want to mention is, let's just go through my folders quickly. For one, I do want to point out there is this button here where you can compress or decompress all of your things. That's good if you have a ton of folders open and you're like, where's this thing? But I want to mention the inbox. Inbox is very important for organization because you can be pretty much as disorganized as you want throughout your entire vault, but you can have an inbox whereby whenever you start a new note, it just starts in the inbox. So let's do new note and you'll see it's created this untitled note in my inbox. Now you want to treat your inbox as like your upfront workspace. Think about it in terms of computer science. There's this term called caching. Caching is essentially like what is in like easily accessible memory so that it can pull it quickly. And what is like in the longer term memory, which it's going to need more time to pull out. Think of this as your cache in terms of this will be the easy stuff you're pulling out. It's the stuff you're currently working on. It's whatever it might be that you have it, you need to finish. And then whenever you're done with that thing, you can just put it into the appropriate folder. Uh, to set up an inbox, it's pretty simple. You just go to the settings and don't feel like you have to call it the inbox either. You can call it whatever you want, but you go to files and links and you'll see this. It says default location for new notes. Just want to make sure that this is in the folder specified below and then you name it whatever you want. If you want this to be at the top of everything that you do of your folder system, you can do just something like an underscore or zero or whatever. And that'll just make sure that it comes to the top of your uh, folder system, but it's totally up to you. I like to have my personal stuff up here. While we're in the folders, I just wanted to. I don't want people to get overwhelmed by the folders. Again, you can be pretty disorganized here, especially once you have it hooked up to a large language model. But I, I do want to point out one thing, which is in my learning, I'm doing all this research and stuff. So I just wanted to show off like how I organize things in a disorganized way, which is to have a very sort of broad top level hierarchy and then a mess under that. So let's go into like philosophy, for example. So you see, it's pretty simple. I just have concepts, people, works. It's three categories. And then in here, it's a mess. It's alphabetical, but there's no sort of structuring of this information. Now, why is this important? Because this is the way you have to start thinking in terms of ideas connecting rather than ideas necessarily being bucketed. You want to bucket them a little bit maybe so you can find it and you know where to stick stuff. But at the end of the day, what we're working towards is our knowledge graph. This is how the ideas are organized and connected and how we can easily find things by using the next plugin that I'm going to mention. It's actually really two plugins. The two plugins are OmniSearch and HomeTab. OmniSearch, you can just go and find it and download it. You can either get to it from Control P, OmniSearch. I have a hotkey, I think, <laughs> let me check. I think it's F1. Nope, it's not. <laughs> I don't, I forget what the key. Oh, I think I made it control F. Yeah, control F. And so this just searches your entire vault. So I can look up Socrates and it's going to bring up every single place where Socrates is mentioned throughout all of my notes, which makes it a lot easier to find. But even more, there's this one called home tab. You can look up in the community plugins and this is just like Google search for your notes. And it plugs into OmniSearch. So whenever you start a new tab, it's going to bring up this home tab. And similarly, I can look up Socrates. It might take a while because my fault is quite large at the moment, as you saw. But when it catches up, it's going to show you everything, everywhere where Socrates is mentioned. And then you can just click that and it'll bring you to the note. And then the last one is, of course, the one I use probably the most. Smart connections, it's usually going to show up here as smart connections chat. And this is just connected to all of my notes. Now you probably want to be a little bit more specific, especially with a huge vault like mine. The way the technology works is it's going to look based on your input contextually, 
what are similar things throughout the vault, those connections, everything. But really you want to make sure you're specifying. There's two ways to do this. The first way is that you can look at a specific note. So if I do the double brackets open, it's going to bring up essentially a search bar for my entire vault. And I can look up Socrates again, and you'll see this is my Socrates note. And now it's going to reference that note when it does its output. So you're really specifying what, where you want it to look. And this is important. Similarly, you can do this with folders where you do the slash. It's going to bring up all my folders. I might look up philosophy and people, and then it's going to use that as it's, it's only going to really focus on that for it pulling whatever information it needs. So this just allows you to really, if you have this huge vault that is unfocused, you can focus in not by organizing things, but just by talking to the LLM and pointing it towards more or less, what did you call this thing? You know, it's going to have something to do with Socrates, right? And it's either going to be this one or it's going to be any of these things. It's funny. It's like pulling out also where the letters are showing up closely. So this is the way you can quickly get to know your vault. I will mention too in Smart Connections, this awesome feature called Smart Connection Files. And this is going to let you know where in your vault are there semantic similarities. So you can easily just pull this, for example, into here. And then you have a backlink. So you're just creating even better, more robust connections. I'm planning lots and lots more videos on things, uh, especially around smart connections and just using a large language model in your, your workflow and your process. But if you have gotten overwhelmed, if you are feeling like it's too much, this is, I'm, I'm hopeful that this video will help focus you in terms of it's really three things inbox to make sure you have everything up front where you're organizing a way to easily search through home tab and Omni search and a way to keep track of your tasks and interact with your knowledge through checklists and smart connections. So I hope this uh, video was helpful as always. Thank you chatters. And I will see you next time.